Welcome to the Nebraska Soybean Board Weekly Market Roundup, being brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. I'm Susan Littlefield, and we are at the Nebraska State Fair. No surprise, as a lot of talk has been, what the heck is going on with these markets? I've had a couple farmers just stopping by to say, how are they getting the numbers on this pro-farmer tour? Because my crop doesn't look as good as what they're saying. We're going to talk about those numbers as final numbers were delivered on a Friday afternoon. We'll also take a look at the chop fest that's been going on in this cattle market, and who knows? We'll see what else these two come up with as we have today's report. Imagine a future fueled by soy-based possibilities. A future where creativity and productivity live together under one roof. A future that takes you from point A to point B to point Z, all while ensuring brighter tomorrows for our next generation. A soy-based future? It's already here. Welcome back once again. As you can see, joining me is Sue Martin. Sue is with Ag and Investment out of Clarion, Iowa. And then we've got Darren Fessler joining us with Lakefront Futures here in Nebraska. And both of you um, you've had a chance to dive into these numbers that came from Pro Farmer. And first time, I'm going to throw it out. Sue, what was your initial thoughts? I thought, holy crap, look at that bean number. It's, it's, it's like, I can't wait for Sunday night, you know, um, since I'm always an optimist, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, but I would have to say, uh, now that we've seen their number at 49.7, it brings me to mind that come Sunday night, Monday, we're going to be looking at the forecast to see if it heat stays with us. And also, um, it'll probably have us really looking towards the crop condition ratings, but it brings us back to now the, the forecast, the weather. What about, what about for you, Darren? What did you see in the initial glance that kind of caught your attention? You know, these numbers were great. The, the guys and gals that did this tour, I mean, battled the heat props to them this week. They did an excellent job. I thought the things that I'm taking away from this is the stuff that we had seen Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or even Monday, or is maybe an entirely different crop even four or five days from now. So without this, like Sue said, the weather is key here and, and the Euro model weeklies are not showing a whole lot of rain. It's, just, it's bringing the heat back in this next week. So this bean crop had a very, very tight balance sheet. We needed it to finish good. It's not finishing good. I think we are trending under 50. Uh, it, you know, the, the thing that I, I battle with here is if we trend under 50, if we get to the 1430 levels, can we be competitive enough with Brazil to move the bushels? I think, you know, and, and what kind of number of fudging will the USA do at the end of the day, I think, to, to you know, calm the storm a little bit? All right. Well, so you brought up the fact that um, Sunday night's trade could be interesting. I mean, folks are going to get a couple of days to really kind of digest what these numbers have to say. So kind of what are your thoughts that we might be dealing with come Sunday? Well, I think we'll be higher um, as we go into the new week. I think the markets will be looking at this. Now, granted, they'll have time to digest this number and um, maybe sort of settle it down a little bit rather than if we were trading tonight. But also, one thing I've got to give, um, the Pro Farmer Tour this year might have had a little bit of, a, of a, an edge on that because trucks are further ahead and uh, especially corn, but uh, the crops are further ahead. And when we look at uh, South America, Brazil's very hot and dry. And if they remain that way, which seasonally they're kind of on the right now, anyway, they start playing September 15th. And by the time we get into mid-September, if we've had the heat stay with us, well, quality, first off, it's, it's really going to take a hit in both corn and beans. But um, they're going to be looking at our markets and our higher prices, which is how they're going to plan. Well, and Darren, I'm sure that the dollar is really going to factor in, too, to what we see in this as, as we move forward. And, and we, countries like China look at who can, who can we buy cheaper crops from. 
Yeah, I mean, we're at higher highs, higher lows, six weeks in a row now, U.S. dollar index. And I think at the end of the day, it probably will have some sort of impact. But I think like Sue said, I mean, you, with these type of numbers, especially on the beans, uh, I'm definitely looking for a higher open come Sunday evening. And then it's focused on the weather this next week. And it, it's hard to imagine the USA increasing yield at this moment. I mean, the, I think the 175 on corn is off the table. I think the 52 or 51 is off the table. We got to be mindset now is okay these balance sheets are substantially I on the bean side uh, corn still got plenty of fluff in it but beans are definitely getting tighter here i mean you look at the chinese uh the prices even in china the number two beans bean prices in china are continuing to, to move quite a bit higher yet as well and we don't really know or not maybe getting the whole uh, story about what is taking place in the recent floods so as long as crush margins remain strong new plants coming online in the dakotas you know, it, it, it it's more of a friendly environment for the bean market, I think, versus corn. So who's going to have more of the struggle Sunday night into Monday, corn or beans? Can, the, I think the bigger question is, can beans drag corn with it? And can wheat stabilize to support corn? I th even if we're at a 70, 170 national yield, we're still 17, 172. We're still up near near 2 billion. That's before we maybe move the needle a little bit on exports. But can beans drag? Beans are going to have to be the leader here for corn. There's no question about it. And I think at this moment, I think they probably will, because there's going to definitely be some sort of interest in, in the trade here to keep beans elevated here, just given our balance sheets. You know, it's been an interesting weekend. And I, so, Sue, Darren and I were talking earlier this week about Oats Knows. And, and we saw that Oats had a little factor in the trade as well. I didn't get to see really how they did on a Friday. But we had Oats midweek. We had concerns with the wheat pull and the corn. There's a lot of factors and fingers in this pot for the grains. Well, there is. And you're right. There is that saying, Oats Know and Wheat Leads. So we're waiting on wheat. <laughs> but... Um, I will say that um, uh, the oat crop is um, very, our supplies are tight. And not only out of the US, Canada, they're having their share of issues with weather. And so global supplies are very, very tight, and corn's grains are tight. So I think that when we look at um, the green market as a whole, I think we just have to keep an eye on India. That's a huge story when it comes to wheat and also soybeans. And then I think China's another one. But, you know, the dollar has been pretty strong this week as well. Not that China cares so much right at the moment because they're buying in Brazilian real, or excuse me, they're buying in Brazil on yuans. And so I think that when we look at the market here, my biggest things are weather. Quality never really gets priced in because you, it disappears faster. Uh, so as we combine, we're going to have smaller yields, I think, because of lighter test weights in corn and in beans, smaller beans maybe, uh, which means less oil content. So I think when we go down the road, it's going to be this quality issue. You have to use more of the crop. It disappears faster, but USDA will use it in revisions when it works best for them. So, Darren, the revisions that Sue just talked about, everybody says, oh, we just need to wait till January to really make our final decisions. They certainly could. I, I'm not in that camp. I think there's enough evidence that we're going to see here uh, pretty soon that you're, you're probably going to have a lot smaller test weights. I mean, there's a huge difference between 62 and 58, and then the kernel counts. Uh, you know, I think if you you look at what has transpired this week, I mean, we, we had a lot of high overnight temps. I always call that the silent killer of yield here. And then you had the, the obviously these really, really high daytime temps. This crop did take a break. I, I think Sue is spot on here when we're talking the quality of this crop and, and it's not, that doesn't mean it's hyper bullish and we're going to all these xyz prices on corn in particular i mean we've still got a large south american crop <laughs> but yeah i mean it, it's the beans that again are going to drive and the quality is going to be at the end of the day it's boy it's going to be a huge factor and i don't think necessarily the market's that concerned with it right now but they're going to have to be later on all right so quality concern of these beans concerns with this corn crop then why don't we just throw in a whole nother monkey wrench and the worries that's happening with the panama canal right now either one of you kind of give me your two cents what are we going to see if we don't get the the water flow down to that canal. Well, it certainly affects the exporting ability to get the crops moved 
fast or any product that goes through that canal mm -hmm. and they're having to offload and then load, you know, so that lighter weights on those uh, ships going through. Mm -hmm. it, it is a concern. It might be more helpful to Brazil than to us. All right. I want to switch gears quick and then take a look at the livestock side. Are they going to take advantage of, of what's happening with, with the flip-flop that we've had in this in this cash market and the choppiness that we've had in the cattle trade in general. Darren? Well, I, th I think the fundamentals of cattle remain strong here. As long as the, the consumer remains re resentless here and, and continues to buy the beef, which they have been, uh, we're watching obviously the weakness in the job data, which has not happened just yet here. As long as it, the consumer remains strong, consumers willing to buy, and these cash mar mar markets stay strong, it, it, it's hard to say that cattle is going to have this massive turnaround yet here. And, and you got to consider the type of beatdown the cattle has had. There is definitely consumers and customers out there that are saying, hey, we've had some cattle loss this week. And, and USD is always kind of slow to recognize these events. So again, I, I'm still uh, fundamentally bullish uh, on the cattle market in general. Well, I want to direct folks real quick to our website at ruralradionetwork.com because the USDA on Friday did come out with some opportunities to help out these livestock producers with cattle that are over 800 pounds. So if they want to know more information on how they can get that, they need to contact their local FSA office. But you're right, Darren, it does take sometimes a long time for the USDA to play catch up. We see that as well in these cattle weights on having to wait two weeks to find out how they're doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just there, there's programs out there. Definitely take advantage of it if you are one of these producers that have had lost cattle here. But it, it's you know, it, it, this week took a big toll. I think that toll is going to take some time to, to, to smooth out through the whole system. But yeah, the, these cattle um, still, again, I think they're fundamentally bullish here. We, we could be looking at new higher prices here later on here in a few months. Ed. Well, I thank both of you for joining me. Clay Patton just came back to our booth with a dessert that has bacon on it. So I'm going to go try that. We just want to remind folks, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. And that's been this week's Nebraska Soybean Board Weekly Market Roundup.